Maryland's ban on semi-automatic semi-automatic rifles and other types of guns uh, is upheld by the Fourth Circuit Court. And uh, what kind of impact is that going to have on Illinois' challenge? Good morning. Illinois in Focus Daily. I'm Greg Bishop. And like, subscribe, hit that notification bell each and every weekday morning. And join us for uh, news that's going to impact you here in the land of Lincoln. So uh, headlines yesterday, Fourth Circuit upholds assault weapons ban in Maryland. And the way this case is set up now it can go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, this could happen before Illinois' ban uh, is, is challenged through the courts entirely because you've still got the bench trial in Illinois, the Southern District, scheduled for September 16th. Now, that's the lower court, all right, the circuit court. It would still have to go through the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. But you've got uh, out of Washington, uh, the Fourth Circuit uh, upholding the assault weapons ban in Maryland. Out of Washington, you've got uh, the Second Amendment Foundation uh, chiming in on this. Uh, the Second Amendment Foundation announcing that they will seek Supreme Court review in Bianchi v. Wilkinson. And that's the challenge against Maryland's assault weapons ban after the Fourth Circuit in Maryland. Uh, upheld the law. So you have uh, the executive uh, the director of the Second Amendment Foundation saying today's decision from the Fourth Circuit is unsurprising given the prior decision in other cases. Uh, and continuing on here with uh, the reaction, we believe, uh, like with Colby, the court's analysis is flawed and the challenged law is unconstitutional. We will be filing a petition for certiorari at the Supreme Court, as this case presents an excellent vehicle for the court to settle this debate once and for all. Uh, it goes on to say that in the 65 page opinion, judges for the majority wrote the assault weapons at issue fall outside the ambit of protection offered by the Second Amendment because, in essence, they are military style weapons designed for sustained combat operations that are ill suited and disproportionate to the need for self defense. Chief Judge Diaz drafted a concurring opinion with five other judges joining. Uh, Judge Richardson drafted a dissenting opinion with four other judges joining, stating that the Second Amendment has n not a second-class right. Uh, it's not a, a, a second-class uh, right for individuals because, uh, uh, in essence, uh, you've got uh, subject to the, the whimsical discretion of federal judges uh, is how we've seen it play out. Now, they go on to say that it... Uh, it mandate its mandate is absolute and applied here unequivocal in holding otherwise that the majority grants states historically unprecedented leeway to trammel on the constitutional liberties of their citizens. Uh, joining the Second Amendment Foundation in the case are uh, various other groups. Uh, you've got uh, even Firearms Policy Coalition uh, chiming in on this as well. Um, we'll get to some of their statements. But uh, clearly, the case in Maryland queued up now for the U.S. Supreme Court. And we look at uh, the Firearms Policy uh, Coalition here on X. Uh, they posted an article saying that uh, FPC taking Maryland's assault weapons ban to the Supreme Court following the Fourth Circuit decision. So Firearm Policy Coalition announcing the United States Court of Appeals of the Fourth Circuit has issued a highly flawed en banc, which is a full court hearing, uh, decision on the merits upholding Maryland's ban of so-called assault weapons in Bianchi v. Brown. Uh, the opinion can be found uh, at the FPC website. Uh, FPC will take the Fourth Circuit's terrible decision to the Supreme Court without delay. Our objective is simple. End all so-called bans on so-called assault weapons nationwide, and we look forward to doing just that. Uh, the Bianchi case is part of FPC's high-impact FPC law strategy, uh, and FPC is joined uh, by others. Uh, and earlier this year, you had the Supreme Court decline to take up uh, prejudgment cases from Illinois. However, uh, this will be the first petition for sorcery in a case regarding assault weapons for final judgment. Uh, and I think that that point right there is important because when we had Illinois' case, and just to give you some more background on this, and surely if you've been following the channel for a long time, you, you've, you've been up to date on this. But Illinois' challenge of the ban on semi-automatic firearms, uh, and again, that ban was put in place in January of 2023. Here we are in August of 2024. Lawsuits in the federal courts uh, on preliminary grounds, on initial requests to block the law while the case played out on the merits, meaning getting to final judgment, those preliminary requests went all the way up to the appeals court and all the way to the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court, when they were asked to take the case, they replied ultimately uh, at the tail end of the most recent term and said, you know, 
this case isn't ripe yet. This case has not gotten final judgment yet from the lower courts. So uh, they went ahead and decided, you know, we're going to we're going to put this back to the lower courts uh, and get us a final judgment that we can act upon. That final judgment case now is the Maryland case because the appeals court in the Fourth Circuit chose not to put it back down into the lower court to deal with any unanswered questions. No, they went ahead and dealt with it on final judgment. Now the next step in the Maryland case is the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, while the Illinois case, surely that will still go on, right? So we'll have uh, the Southern District make a decision whether it goes one way or the other. It'll go to the Seventh Circuit uh, Court in Illinois, and then from there it could go to the U.S. Supreme Court, but likely the Maryland case is the one that's actually going to make it to the U.S. Supreme Court earlier than Illinois. Uh, another uh, a bit of uh, uh, analysis here from uh, Costas Morris. Uh, he says that the uh, Fourth Circuit en banc reached is expected. It's uh, ruling in Bianchi upholding Maryland's ban on common firearms and rifles. What was unexpected was the speed of the ruling. I and most others thought that they would stall as long as possible as SCOTUS could not hear the case this term. And by then, who knows who's on SCOTUS and Kamala could be picking replacements. Such hackery, Costas says, uh, was uh, even more expected after they took the crazy step of taking this case away from the three judge panel and going directly to en banc review. Uh, so while I'm about to be very critical of what I expect to be a trash opinion, I will say something nice first. Thank you, Fourth Circuit, for not taking the hack approach and withholding a ruling to stall for time and taking it away from the panel in hindsight moved this along faster than waiting for a ruling, then doing an en banc anyway. Uh, now the pressure's up for SCOTUS. This case was previously um, GVR'd uh, and its final judgment, so no excuse for not granting cert. And no waiting on the uh, circuit split isn't a real answer because the pro-gun circuits never hear assault weapons ban cases. Anyways, let's take a look. So uh, he goes into his own analysis there and you can follow him on X uh, to get that. So what about the Harris uh, campaign? Uh, at a rally last night, uh, Harris talked about her VP pick, Tim Walls, and how he's a gun owner and uh, somebody who uh, is also wanting, quote, common sense gun reforms. What does that look like? So Tim is a hunter and a gun owner who believes, as the majority of gun owners do, that we need reasonable gun safety laws in America. So as governor, he expanded background checks and increased penalties for illegal firearm sales. And together, when we win in November, we are finally going to pass universal background checks, red flag laws, and an assault weapons ban. Again, uh, the Harris Walls campaign uh, taking those particular uh, policy initiatives, and you'll likely hear a lot more debate about all of this. Uh, as uh, as we continue on in not just what happens with the uh, Maryland case, but also what happens with the Illinois case and whatever outcome there is in November. Uh, it is Illinois in Focus daily, uh, each and every weekday morning here. Uh, so be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and join us uh, as we uh, are here with you each and every weekday morning with Illinois in Focus daily.